Hello everyone, Fanta here, you're watching Fantavision, and today we're going to be discussing how to do the rebug exploit on the PlayStation 3. Now this is going to be what you call a jailbreak, or hacking the system, or whatever you want to call it, but we're going to be doing the rebug version today, which means there are system requirements. First of all, you have to be at 4.86 or lower. Now, some people think 4.87, I've heard people run into issues with that, so your best bet is 4.86, so hopefully you can either downgrade your firmware or you have that already. Also, with this is going to be a system requirement, which is if you've got a fat PlayStation 3, you're all set, congratulations. All of those will work with this jailbreak, and the slimline, all of the model numbers right now on screen, those are the systems that are going to work. Now, the maybes, We'll be finding out in just a little bit whether or not your system is compatible. And uh, fun fact, the system I'm doing this on today is a maybe and it checked out. So you could be lucky if you're in that maybe category. If you have a super slim console, you unfortunately cannot do the rebug jailbreak, but there are soft mods out there for you. So if for some reason any of these things don't work, there are solutions out there. Don't feel too bad. All right, now for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and create a user two and do the jailbreak through user two for the rest of this run. So go ahead and click user two once you've created that new user. Then we're gonna scroll over to the internet browser. That's gonna open up. And then we're gonna go to tools. We're gonna go ahead and allow cookies. Going to JavaScript, keep that on. And now to make sure we've got the cleanest browser we can, just go ahead and delete cookies, go through, delete search history, delete cache, delete authentication information. Then we're gonna hit triangle again, go to tools, go to home page, and click use blank page. We're gonna hit okay back out of the browser go back in now you have a nice clean browser on a blank page from there we're going to go to p s 3 x loit dot com and there's no E, they're using the three as the E because Leet speak, I guess. We're doing that again. Oh, hit enter too many times. We'll just click the first one. There we go. All right, so we're at the PS3 exploit website. Go ahead and hit the select button, add to bookmarks, boom. Now it's in our bookmarks, we don't have to worry about that again. Then we're gonna head over to the BG tool set. Click the main site. It's gonna take a little bit to load up. Don't worry, there's nothing wrong here. Even if it shows a blank page, it's fine. Click yes. And we're gonna wait for just a few seconds and it's going to initialize the exploit. All right, so it says the initialization is complete. You should hear your PS3 beep. And now we're gonna head over to the flash memory manager. Now this will just take a couple seconds to load up. It'll check your PS3 to see if it's compatible. We see that this is indeed compatible, thankfully. I was kind of worried, but it worked out in the end. So if this is compatible, congratulations. You can continue with this video and jailbreak your PlayStation 3. If not, there are other options out there. I just won't be covering that in this video. And there are plenty of other people that have done it or you guys can request down below if you want me to do it. Maybe I'll get another PlayStation or something. We'll figure it out. Now that we know that your system is compatible with this, go ahead and get a USB drive and make sure it's already in the FAT32 format. If it's not, right click it, go to format, and then pick FAT32. If it is a large USB drive, try to find a smaller one because it'll be a lot easier. But if you can't, there are different programs you can use that will do it for you and i've provided that link down below i use you know fat 32 format i've used i've used a lot of different programs but that's the link that i've found most people use so go ahead and use that one if you need to but i have an eight gigabyte flash drive here so there's no real issue all right now that we have our usb plugged back in and formatted to fat 32 we're going to go back to that internet browser 
going to go to, well, I didn't actually put BG toolset as a bookmark, but I'll go ahead and do that right now. So go back to the BG toolset on the PS3 exploit website. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to bookmarks so I don't have to do that again. It's gonna beep again. Then once the site loads up, go ahead and go to the flash memory manager. Wait for that to load again. And look at that, our console is still compatible. That's good. Go to the flash memory, go ahead and hit X on that. Go to save flash memory backup. We're gonna wanna do this in case something bad happens to our PlayStation 3 during this whole thing. We brick our system. This will allow us to reflash the system if we need to. Hopefully we don't need to, because we don't wanna go through all that, but just in case, you wanna make sure you get that. So we're gonna go ahead and dump it, and it will take either tens of seconds up to a minute and 30. Okay, wow, that only took 12 seconds. So, there you go, that's all done. Go ahead and close that out. Close the browser. And we're gonna unplug that USB and go back to our computer. All right, so now that we're back on our computer again, we're gonna have our USB plugged in and we've got our dump.hex file. If you for some reason can't see that, click the file name extensions right there. That'll show you that dump.hex. And we're going to go ahead and keep that secure and safe. But before we do that, we want to make sure it dumped correctly. So you see this little second window creeping in. We're going to want to use the Pi PS3 checker, which is in the link down below to the Google Drive that has all these different files on here that you need. I'm going to go there. And you see this little thing that says drag and drop your dump here? We're going to do exactly that. How shocking. It's gonna come up with this little screen. It's gonna be running a bunch of stuff. And boom, no dangers, no warnings. That's what we wanna see. So if there's any issues at all, you're gonna to wanna to redump your system and then just go ahead and repeat all the steps that we've done and then try this again and hopefully there's no danger, no warning. So we're gonna go ahead and close that out. That's pretty great. And we're gonna save it to either your desktop or anywhere you know you're gonna be able to find this later. You can put on your Google Drive, you can do whatever you want, but this is your system. It's like a thumbprint, they're all different. So I'm gonna save mine as slim PS3 dump. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. And I don't need the check log, I'm going to delete that. And move that there. Boom, there we go, 16 megs, 16 megs. Looks good. And if we truly don't trust our own eyes, we can do it again, run it, make sure it transferred over. Look at that, zero. So now that we have verified our PS3 dump, everything's fine. So if something goes wrong, we have something to go back to. Go ahead and create the folder. Actually, it might be in here already. Let's see, rebug, update PS3. Go ahead and just take this, this is gonna be in your Google Drive link down below. Drag that over. This already has everything set up for you. What you need to do if you were gonna do this manually is do PS3 exactly how you see here and then another folder underneath that which would be update in all caps. And then below that you would have the update which is the ps3 update.pup. Now you don't have to do any of that because it's included in the Google Drive link down below. So, boom, there you go. You're skipping a bunch of steps. This won't take too long, we'll move on. All right, now that that is moved over, since we're already on the computer, we might as well move Multiman over as well. This is something that is also going to be in the Google Drive, but if you do want any other homebrew as well, go ahead and do that right now. I mean, you can do it whenever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and move Multiman over because that's gonna be the main thing we're gonna be using for our PlayStation 3 when it's jailbroken and it has the most features that I want to take advantage of and I'm sure you do as well. And I'll also have a link down below for more homebrew if there's something else that you're interested in because there's, there's quite a bit you can do with your PlayStation now. All right, so I'll quickly verify that your USB flash drive is plugged in and then head back to the internet browser. Go back to the PS3 tool set. Now, sometimes I've noticed that going to the tool set in your favorites doesn't work. 
So we're gonna go ahead and try to go through the PS3 exploit website again, click main site, and see if that loads up. I've had this issue a couple times now, I don't know why. I'm gonna run that plugin. Okay, and then it works perfectly. I don't quite understand that, but if you're having that issue, I have had that issue as well. So I guess just keep loading from the PS3 exploit website just to make sure that doesn't happen. We're gonna go back to the flash memory manager. It's gonna tell you congratulations again. Your PS3 is still compatible. That's pretty good. Go down to the flash memory patch. We're gonna go ahead and load that patch from HTTPS. Now you can, if you want to, download the patch file to your USB and then load it but I don't really understand why that would be useful. So we're just gonna go ahead and load it from HTTPS because this is gonna do everything for us and we don't have to do multiple steps. All right, so now we have completely downloaded that patch from that HTTPS. Much easier than the other one, but I digress. Then we're gonna go ahead and click apply patch. It's going to warn us that this could potentially brick our PS3. It's giving you the warning, so don't blame me if it does happen, but this is a relatively safe procedure. It should be fine. And you know what? I'm gonna go through it right now. So if it happens to me, uh, I guess you're just gonna see it. So you click yes, and now put your controller down, which I'm doing very carefully. Oh, drop my phone. Placing it down. Don't don't touch anything. Don't do anything. Just let it do its thing. It'll take a couple minutes. All will be well. Whew! All right, there we go. I uh, <laughs> was sweating there a little bit because it wasn't moving. Whereas the last time I did this, it was moving. So if you see it just sitting there for quite a while, it is doing things. Your system's not dead. You're gonna be fine. Go ahead and hit close. We can now reboot the system. That's the scary part over with, we're done. That's the scary part. The rest is easy and now go ahead and reboot the system. All right, now that the system is back on again, we no longer need user two. You can delete it if you want. I will probably just leave it there in remembrance of this jailbreak. Go up to user one. And then we're gonna go ahead and verify that, yep, there's our USB device over to settings system update update via storage media and if you copied over the folders like they were already you really didn't have to do anything then you should see 4.86.1 rebug le on your usb device go ahead and click ok please wait and then it's just like any other system update and it's gonna do its own thing, let it do its own thing, and then uh, once it restarts, we will start talking about homebrew. Now that your system has rebooted, look at that! Whoa, red icons, because congratulations, before we do anything else, your PlayStation 3 is now jailbroken. And now, to celebrate, let's go ahead and install some homebrew. So before I just start doing things, go to Package Manager in the Game section, go to Install Package Files, go to Standard, and there's Multiman, which again, you need to have all of your homebrew at the base root part of your USB. Don't have any folders, just have it on the root of the USB. So go ahead and click that. We're gonna start installing it. It's only 35 megabytes, pretty small, so it's not gonna be very difficult to install, be super quick. And then before we start playing around with Multiman, which we will, don't worry, that's where all the fun stuff is, we're gonna go to Package Manager, Install Package Files, System Storage, and we're gonna get that Rebug Toolkit, which is just gonna give us some more customization options and things you can mess around with with your PlayStation 3. Now, let's go ahead and go into Multiman, which is gonna require just one thing. Okay, now we've got Multiman opening up right away. There's some just atrocious, awful music playing. I don't want that. You don't want that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We're gonna go all the way down to theme audio. And we're disabling that because I don't know what the hell that is. I don't want it. We're gonna go ahead and show you what Multiman can do. So, 
If you have a PlayStation 3 disc, this is where the fun begins. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with one of my favorite, if not, you know what, this is my favorite PlayStation 3 game of all time. Alright, so now that you've got your PlayStation 3 disc in, which I put in Little Big Planet because it's arguably one of the best PlayStation 3 games out there, go ahead and hit Triangle on there, and then go over to Copy, pick your hard drive, which I really hope you did upgrade, and then you can now back up every single PlayStation 3 game you own to your hard drive. So you don't have to get up and put discs in anymore, you don't have to worry about any of that. Hell, you can put PlayStation 2 discs in here and rip those games to your system, which I highly recommend you do because before the jailbreak, you could not play PlayStation 2 games on your system. You just couldn't. So once it gets back to this screen, go ahead and hit square. And now you'll see what's this, an HDD version of the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the disc out to prove my point. Disc is out. And then... What's that? It shows the disc is in, but the disc is out. I mean, you can't see that, you're just gonna have to believe me. But why would I lie about that? I'm not selling anything. Look at that, there's a new update for the game. By the way, you can update these games through PlayStation and the official means, and you're not gonna get banned or anything like that. Now, I'll have to come back to you guys whether or not you can play this system online. Oh my god, there's a lot of updates. Uh, we'll be back in a second. <laughs> Alright, after an eternity of updates, the game is running! Right off the hard drive, no disc needed, we're good. You can now play your entire PlayStation collection straight from the hard drive. Now it's gonna take a long time to go through all that, but I'm gonna be making a separate video about what exactly you can do with the PlayStation 3 jailbroken, how to move games over faster, and plenty of other things. So look forward to that video. And thank you for watching. I really do hope I made this process easy. It is a pretty easy jailbreak. I know some systems are a little bit more complicated. And I know this didn't cover all the different firmwares, but again, if you do want me to do the other firmware and systems, please let me know down below. And of course, like the video if you guys like it. And also, real quick, before I end this video, please, please upgrade your hard drive, for the love of God. If you're gonna start backing up a bunch of stuff to your system, highly recommend you get a terabyte hard drive. I believe that is the biggest size you can get. I did some research online. Please let me know if I'm wrong but I saw people trying to use two terabytes or more and they were running into issues. I've heard some mixed reports on 1.5, but one terabyte seemed to be the agreed upon space. Now for this system, I'm using a solid state drive. I did this to speed up the transfer process, speed up load times a little bit, but honestly, my experience with the regular hard drive on my other PlayStation that I jailbroke, it's not a huge difference, it was about $45 for a terabyte hard drive, a regular one, and about 100 to 110 for a terabyte solid state. So it's really depending on how much money you want to spend. But I definitely recommend you at least upgrade that hard drive to one terabyte. And of course, please do subscribe for more content because there will definitely be more on the way. And as always, have a fantastic day. See you everybody.